Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Steve. This is my wife, Lindsay, and we are going to be reacting to British versus American doctor visits. This is a topic I've never looked into. Lindsay doesn't know anything at all about healthcare in the UK, no. really. I've done a few videos about the NHS, but I don't know anything about what happens during a British doctor visit. And to make this video better, this is actually based on private health care in both the U.S. and U.K. So that's a little bit different from the NHS. So is that when people pay out of pocket? Like I, that? I don't know anything about private health care in the U.K. So that's one of the things that I'm really excited to learn yeah, about here. That. Yeah, but um, this video was recommended to us by Dara herself. We did a reaction to um, her grocery comparison video about three weeks or so ago. She did a really great job with that video comparing the grocery prices in the U.S. versus the U.K. Mm -hmm. at two specific stores that were comparable to each other. Um, what's great about Dara's channel, she is uh, she has a channel called Magenta Otter Travels, her and her husband, is that she spends, she's an American, her husband's British, and she spends, I don't know, I think she said like five months a year or so living. About half and half. About half and half, roughly, living in the UK and living in the US. So she has a really good perspective because she comes from the American perspective of what it's like to do all these things within the UK, right. if you will. And so uh, she's got a really great channel. The link will be in the description for this video if you want to check out uh, some of her stuff. Um, but yeah, guys, do you have anything you want to add before we get started? No. All right, really excited to check out this British versus American doctor visit. And today we're going to talk about doctor's appointments. Now to be clear, I'm not going to talk about the NHS today because okay. so far I still haven't used the NHS. Okay. I have obviously used private insurance and seen the doctor many, many times in my long life in the, in US. the US. And in the past few years, I've gone to the doctor here in the UK also paying privately. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm going to compare today. Although in an upcoming video, I will be talking about the NHS because yesterday Ian and I both went to our local surgery and registered with the GP or rather we started that registration process. So local hmm. surgery. What does that mean? I have no idea. Maybe like um, urgent care. No, not urgent care. Maybe like a emergency room. I don't know. That, I, I I remember emergency room was called something else. I don't remember what it was. I don't know, guys. It what, be just the doctor's what office. Is, what is what is a yeah? What is a local surgery? Is that just a local hospital? Maybe. I don't know. Let us know in the comments, guys. What is a local surgery? I'm curious to know why she hasn't used the NHS yet. Because didn't she say she's been like part time living yeah. in the UK for like a I don't long know. time? I don't know. I wonder if you have to live there for a certain period of time or something to use the NHS. I don't know. I don't know. Or how place <laughs> like. Stay tuned for an upcoming video where I talk about our experience with the NHS. And also stay tuned for the video about the steam train here in Gloucestershire, Warwickshire, because that's what Sophia is. would love that before right now. So without further ado, let's talk about doctor's appointments. As I share my experience, I'd love to hear how your experience differs. If you're American, how it differs in the States. And if you're British, how it differs versus what your experience has been with the NHS. Here's the situation. I have bone density issues and I have for many, many years. Mm -hmm. I've been having that treated in the US by various doctors, starting with my gynecologist when I was identified as having bone density issues far too young, wow. and then following up with various other doctors like general practitioners, orthopedic surgeons, etc. And really the person who prescribed my drugs was an endocrinologist, hmm. which is a little bit strange because they mostly work with Hormones, right? people with diabetes. Oh wait, oh that's the... That's who I was told to go to in the US. And I was put on some expensive drugs. One is an injection that hmm. you get twice a year and each jab costs about $1,400 wow. if you don't have insurance. And wow. even with insurance, only a tiny portion of that is covered. So it's incredibly expensive. Oh man. And with me being here for five months of the year, I was having trouble getting both of those injections in the US. So I decided this is the year I was gonna sort out how I get things taken care of here as well. That's when the whole odyssey started. Hmm. Let's start with the process of finding a doctor. 
I live in the Dallas, Texas area when I'm in the States, and that is one of the largest major metropolitan areas in the U.S., but I found it really difficult to find a doctor really? who is an expert in bone mineral issues really? and bone That's mineral surprising. disease that is surprising. to help me with my osteoporosis issue. Oh, the insurance. I kept getting... Uh, that is one of the yeah, issues. Being in network. Or yeah, whatever. because... Yeah. I'm guessing maybe you could find a doctor, but they would be out of network mm -hmm. and it would be incredibly expensive. Like she was saying with the $1,400 shots, mm -hmm. you know, if you're paying out of pocket. Which is why it surprises me she would even do the healthcare in the US at all if she has the option to do it in the UK. Because I feel like it would be much more well, affordable. May well, maybe, I mean, maybe she would if she lived out of, we don't know yet. Maybe it's yeah. not as, I don't know. I know the NHS is obviously much more affordable, mm -hmm, right. but the private but healthcare, who knows? She hasn't even done that yet. Well, I know, right, I know. Up until like yesterday, they went to the, or the other day from this video, they mm -hmm. went to the local surgery, wh whichever that is. I think that's the hospital. I don't know. Punted around from doctor to doctor. The only time I saw a doctor who was really willing to sit there and look at my medical history and my records and give me a recommendation based on the latest current research was a doctor at a teaching hospital in Dallas called UT Southwestern. He was a specialist and researcher in bone <laughs> mineral issues. <laughs> So I did meet with him many years ago and he was fantastic. He took the time to go through my records. He gave me his recommendations on my treatment plan and what medications I should be on. And I have gone off of that recommendation for the subsequent years. However, shortly after I met with him, I got a letter from his practice saying that he was no longer seeing patients and he was just going back to researching and teaching. Oh, wow. So I've never been able to go back to him and follow up. Therefore, I've had no continuity of care. And the other doctors I've seen have really just relied on what the other guy said rather than having any knowledge of their own. In contrast, when I decided to go see a bone doctor here in the UK, I was told to see a rheumatologist which makes sense and i don't know why rheumatologists in the u.s wouldn't see me but hmm. i just called up the cheltenham hospital where you can use private insurance or pay cash made an appointment was able to get an appointment with a specialist who knows all about bone mineral issues the next week when you're making an appointment in wow. the u.s often you'll wow the next week okay so like i've heard like when I've heard people talk about the NHS, you have in the comments both positive and negative mm -hmm. things about the NHS, right? Which yeah. that's not what this video is about, but I'm just making a, a point here. Um, and one of the things they say, the people who have a negative connotation about the mm -hmm. NHS, um, which honestly seem to be a minority. Mm -hmm. Most people seem to have good experience with NHS, but... Um, the people that say they haven't, the main thing they seem to talk about is the wait times. Okay. They seem to say that it, it, for some things, for some Which, things. That makes sense. Because there's probably limited doctors in some fields, in some areas that are in the NHS, right? So it would make sense. But the fact that she could, for this specific thing, this mm -hmm. seems to be something that she had a very hard time finding doctors for in the U.S., even with her health insurance. The fact she was able to come in and get an appointment a week later. It's right. pretty impressive. I, I'm curious about what the difference in costs would be. Um, you know, I don't know if she has, does she say she had health insurance in the UK or is she just paying out of pocket? I think she did. Yeah, I think she Because I know they can get health health yeah, insurance, I but I don't know, I don't know anything about how much health insurance would cost <clears throat> for private doctors in the mm, UK. Yeah. That would be interesting to look at too. You'll call around to a bunch of doctors and you'll be told, that doctor's not accepting new patients. Mm -hmm. That doctor doesn't have an appointment for two mm -hmm. months. All the good doctors are either not accepting new patients yeah. or you have to wait a couple months to actually get. Yeah, I, I want to, sorry to keep on pausing, um, but I wanted to say this, that I, in my experience, that is true what she's saying. Um, if you, if you need some sort of a specialist, uh, mm -hmm. generally speaking, if you just need a general doctor and you don't have one, you, you got to, I don't know, you got some sort of like minor issue. You can usually find a general practitioner pretty quickly, but but if you don't care about the, who it is. Yeah. Yeah. But like in her case, she needs a, a specialist. So obviously she's gonna care a lot about mm -hmm. who that is. And so I could imagine that that could be tough here in the States. Get an appointment. When I have used private insurance here in the UK, I've been able to get an appointment very quickly. 
And also the hours are so much better. A lot of doctors don't work at all on Fridays and have pretty Same short with hours here. in the mm-hmm. U.S. Yeah. But I was seen a couple of years back for a different problem at 6.30 at night. I'm like, what doctor has a wow. appointment what? at 6.30 in the evening? British doctors. That's wow. who. Wow. Just a little more customer focused in their approach to patient care. Now let's talk about what happens when you arrive at the doctor's office and wait in the waiting room. In the US, even if you have scheduled an appointment for say two o'clock, mm-hmm. you've got to show up <laughs> at 1.30 because they're yeah. gonna make you fill out a fill bunch out of yeah. forms. Even if you yeah. try to fill out yeah. forms in advance yeah. and bring them in, they still make you come early to fill out all these additional forms then if your appointment's at two o'clock, you will often wait till 2.30, yeah, 2.45, even an hour, three it's, o'clock it's to true. have the nurse come back and collect you from the waiting room. It's annoying. Mm-hmm. As opposed to when I went to the doctor here in England, I was collected exactly on time for when my appointment was wow. by the doctor. No intermediary going through a nurse or PA or whatever. The doctor himself came and collected me right on time from the waiting room oh. and also wow. the waiting room had tea and biscuits ah, tea and biscuits that's pretty cool oh sometimes i'll have co- sometimes i'll have coffee here definitely water a lot but i've never, never seen, seen anything like biscuits, biscuits or something or that's cool man you get a yeah. snack while you wait but it just i i don't go to the doctor that often no but i recently went uh what was that a month or two ago um yeah. and and yeah my exact experience i get there early I didn't have to fill out any forms at the time because they, I was already in the system, but I still have to show up early. And then I literally sat there. I think my appointment was, I, don't remember, I think I sat there for 45 minutes after my appointment schedule. One thing they'll do though sometimes to kind of fake you out and keep you complacent is at your appointment time, they'll come get you and you're like, oh wow, oh on yeah. time. That- and you'll go back. And you'll sit in the room and wait, and they're like, "Okay, the doctor will be with you in just in a little bit." And like one hour yeah, later, you're sitting in there. <laughs> no, that's true. That like when I went to the doctor last, um, I, I did. I, I waited for like 45 minutes out in the waiting. Well, actually, longer than that because it was 45 minutes after the uh, my appointment, so it's closer to probably 50 minutes or an hour or something mm-hmm. like that. I don't remember exactly. Went back, they take your blood pressure and your uh, temperature and your weight and all that. Vitals. Your vitals. Mm -hmm. And then take you back to the room and daughter be with you in a moment. And I literally sat there for 30 more minutes and it's just like... Yeah. It's pretty ridiculous. Like you like No, I don't I don't have that same problem at like the chiropractor. Like there uh, Oh yeah, the chiropractor's like or like boom. a holistic health practitioner. Right. Usually those aren't the same. This but is if the you're medical to, like, a general establishment. Doctor, yeah. Right. Yep. It's true. Absolutely. It's the same same thing. Chiropractor, mm-hmm. boom. I'm in massage therapist. If you I haven't been in a, a years, but I would Yeah, they stick in. to their schedules for the most part. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Seems like they're more I think this is what now I can't talk about the UK, but that's what we're learning here when it comes to doctors. But in the US, it seems like the medical establishment in general is not very customer focused. Yeah, like like she was saying. You become a number more than you're, oh, we care about you and we want to make sure you're healthy and well. But when you go to more alternative things like chiropractic and, and massage and mm-hmm. stuff like that, they seem you're to the focus. You're the focus. They they want to your, your true health is the focus. Yeah, they want to they want to like see what's wrong with you. They want to help you. And I'm not saying medical doctors aren't right. like that, but it seems like because of the system mm-hmm. and the paradigm they're a part of it it is hard for you not to become just a number in a way even if they get into there to help you and they ultimately want to help you Mm -hmm. it seems like it it always goes back to money and numbers yeah but yeah now let's talk about what happens when you get back to the exam room in the u.s the doctors are such a higher life form they don't really spend very much time yes, with seriously. you. Yes. So first, you will be seen yes. by a nurse, mm-hmm. a nurse practitioner, yes. a PA, and they will interrogate you and ask. Something I want to point out, and I don't know if it's just because we have like a lower insurance plan, so yeah. we don't we don't want to pay out of pocket for really really good doctors. But like what I've noticed is. A lot of times now, like. it's hard to even see an actual doctor. Yeah, you see. Like a lot of times, mm-hmm. you'll see a nurse practitioner, mm-hmm. or at the place that we've gone since we lived here, it's like the 
What the interns? Like yeah. The, the daughter. The, I don't know. They're daughter interns. Residents. The residents. Yeah. 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 yeah they're good. still learning. They're so honestly, I don't even know the last time we've seen an actual doctor. Yeah. Wait. Last time I went, did I see? at a hospital? Maybe. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. You're right, though. That's true. Like you barely it's not ever as common here. You're hardly ever able to see an actual doctor if you need one. It's usually a nurse because, like she was saying, they're not accepting new patients. Mm -hmm. They're already. It's very true. You know, kind of annoying. Ask you all these questions. So even though you've already filled out a ton of forms, they won't look at those. They'll still ask you all the pertinent questions. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Then so after a certain amount of time, you might wait another 15 minutes or so. Then the doctor, him or herself, will appear and see you in <laughs> Here person. Here I am. <laughs> and you know what? They'll ask you all the same questions yes. again. Yeah. Because they haven't looked at all the paperwork that yeah. you submitted in advance. <laughs> It's a little annoying. It is very And annoying. the visit is always very brief mm -hmm. because the doctor's time is too valuable to spend very much with you. So they yes. will just hear your problem, do a quick physical exam, and then tell you their verdict, give you the prescriptions that they want you to take, mm -hmm. give you instructions on what you should do, and then be out the door. It's Oh, I don't want to pause yeah, again, but, but like she, you, she, Dara nailed it here. Uh, it, <laughs> it, it's like literally they come in and it's almost like they're rushing already to get done with you so they can move on to their next moneymaker. Mm -hmm. it, it really, that's what it seems like in my experience. And it sounds like in Dara's experience. Do you think that's in your experience as well? I, yeah, like I said, now I will say when we lived in North Carolina, we had a very good general doctor like mm -hmm. a primary physician especially for sophia yeah he was great we loved him yes um he great. was one of the few that when he came in he spent as much time as yeah, he needed to make it, sure your daughter's healthy and he happy awesome. and whole but that's not very common it, well i don't want to say it's not i would just say for me for in my experience, experience our experience that has an, it sounds like dara had the same experience now like i said chiropractors and stuff i oh, yeah. generally feel like they're mm -hmm. i go to chiropractor every once in a while and well, we go to the same chiropractor when we go and <laughs> he's always just like you know like if he sits down and, like, he, and he, he really, talks with you yeah, and he really what's, what's going on how are you doing you know and we we even talk about things that aren't even health related yeah. just like how's life but yeah he's still on time i, I don't know if it's the doctors yeah, that are doing that or if they are almost forced to take on more than they can handle and they've scheduled people too close together or yeah. something. I don't know, but it is really annoying that you can't, you can't generally go to a medical doctor, at least in my experience and know that you're going to be able to like not feel rushed, not feel that you're just a, a number and just a, some money to them. Right. And, and it's always about the drug. It is. It's always, it's <laughs> always, that is the first thing, the last thing and the thing in the middle. We're gonna give you a drug. We're not gonna. We're not gonna look and see if there's other mm -hmm. possibilities. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna throw this drug at you, and that's it. And uh, it's just, oh man. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, let's quit rambling. <laughs> we're we're doing the rambling too much. It's rare that I see a doctor for longer than ten minutes, yeah. maybe fifteen. Yeah. Whereas in the UK, I always see the doctor right away, and he really spends time with me. When I saw that doctor about my bone mineral issues, I had submitted all kinds of records electronically in advance via email. He had printed out all those records. He'd gone through them in detail. Wow. He discussed them with me in detail in an unhurried manner. And he spent a lot of time with me. I think That's I might've awesome. been in his office for 45 minutes. Wow. He really wanted to understand my situation and make sure he was giving me the best advice going forward which I really appreciate it. That's awesome. Now let's talk for a minute about Don't the approach that here that to I know medication of. and the use of prescription drugs. I know that American doctors have a bad reputation for just prescribing drugs all the time, but it's kind of true. I yes. really have felt in my 30 plus years mm -hmm. of coming yes. to the UK that the approach to medicine has been more conservative when it comes to using prescription That's drugs. That's awesome. And even when I was a mom of very small children, both of my boys had ear infections all the time. And in the US, the doctor just prescribes antibiotics mm -hmm. over yes. and over Even and if over it's not again, gonna help even the if issue. your child is getting yeah. ear infections every few months. Yes. Whereas in the UK, <clears throat> that's not the first course of action. That's yes. Awesome. Can can I just take a moment and just Yes. I mean, oh, seriously, yeah. I that is beautiful. Life. That is amazing. That is a pet peeve of mine here in the U.S. that it, it could be, it's, 
it's it's a viral thing, mm -hmm. and they're still gonna they're still gonna prescribe you antibiotics that are for bacteria, mm -hmm. and it's just constant just shoving. You know, there's times that you need a prescription drug. There are. There's plenty of times that person need prescription for whatever. But it right? shouldn't be the first go to. Yes, just you, to get you. Out you of should. Office. A doctor should be taking the time to see. Is there any other possibilities than taking a drug that may have side effects? You know what I mean? Like side of drugs with side effects should be not the first mm. thing. You know what I mean? This this makes me wonder what the education for a doctor in the UK versus the US is. Ooh. Because here the primary focus, at least from what I know about it, obviously I don't have a doctor's degree, but from the doctors I've heard speak about the issue, they say that their focus is primarily the medication and knowing mm -hmm. what to prescribe for what, and you don't get much nutrition education or no, anything like very that. Little nutrition it's for what focused on the medicine. So mm -hmm. I don't know, that, that would be interesting and, and, to find out. And obviously, you know, as a doctor, mm -hmm. You know, knowing knowing different uh, drugs and knowing how to prescribe them correctly and when to prescribe them is yeah, an important. extremely yeah, important part. Absolutely. But it does seem that that That's some like of the, the focus, some of the um, some of the things like nutrition and things seems to be things that they don't learn as much in medical mm -hmm. school and it's more about the drugs than anything else. Yeah, um, I've been told this numerous times by doctors themselves. So um, it, I would be interested to know what what the differences may be for a doctor going into a UK mm -hmm. medical school versus yeah. an American medical school. That's something we the need to look into. In what they learn. Yes, it may not. It may be the same. I don't know, but uh, so far this sounds majorly different. Her experience. There's other types of things that they try more natural remedies or conservative or preventative approaches rather than yes the overuse of antibiotics Hallelujah. and other medications. So I was surprised, but not surprised when the doctor here looking at all of my history and all of my test results said, I don't think you need to be on that $1,400 injection wow. that you were That's getting crazy. twice a year. So I recommend you stop doing that. that Thankfully, is awesome. I'd only had a couple injections, so it was okay for me to stop. The other interesting point is, even if I had chosen to get that injection, it would have cost a fraction of the amount. So let's talk about follow-up. I have been to dozens, if not hundreds of doctor's appointments in the US in my life. And what is typical is when the doctor's telling you what to do next, you're sitting there up on the exam table, <laughs> maybe wearing some paper disposable <laughs> gown, or maybe you got your shoes and socks off. And be and sure to remember all this, hand, yeah. But they just spew all these instructions yes. at you. Of, you need to do this three times a day. And I don't like questions. memorizing all of those instructions. I really would prefer that something would be written down. Right. And my podiatrist is great because at least she does give me sheets that have instructions on how yeah, a lot to of times they do follow up care after my office visit. But that is unusual. And I'm always having to ask doctors like, hey, can you write down all those things you just told me to do? And then they assign their nurse to do it. But at least I, I get instructions written down because I want to know what they said so I can follow the instructions carefully. Then contrast that to my British experience where when I've been to the doctor in Britain, I get a written letter following up from the doctor no. of his diagnosis wow. and his recommendation for care and future treatment, which I really, really appreciate. Finally, cost. Again, I'm not talking about the NHS, I'm talking about private insurance or paying by cash. And I can tell you that American healthcare is ridiculously expensive. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I go for an initial consultation to a specialist about some situation, some medical issue I'm dealing with, it is not uncommon for me to spend three or $400 oh, yeah. in that initial consultation. Mm -hmm. Contrasting that to the appointment I had with the bone mineral specialist, regarding my bone density issues here, it was 225 pounds for the appointment. Now, I think that's pretty expensive for British care, but I did not begrudge it because he spent so much time researching my problem before I got there mm -hmm. and so much time with me while I was there. And in the end, he recommended that I stop taking these really expensive drugs that I was already having to take. So I'm saving a ton of money in the end, and I feel like I'm getting a more appropriate treatment plan. Yeah. Going back to the cost of those medications, 
that shot, injection, jab, whatever you call it, that I was getting twice a year was $1,400 a, a shot. Piece. Wow. That is crazy. And even with my insurance, I just covered a portion of that, a little portion. So it was maybe $1,200 out of pocket for me to get that. Hmm. Even if I had needed to continue taking that drug here in the UK, I could have gotten that same injection wow. for below $500. Wow, even that's... if you can't use the NHS, even if you don't That's use the amazing. NHS, it's still so much less expensive and so much better care here in Britain in my experience. That doesn't really surprise but me, honestly. That's just my experience. If yours has been different, let me know. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments and stay tuned for my upcoming videos about our <laughs> NHS experience. Thank wow, guys, that was amazing. That is Dara, excellent job on I'm this jealous. video. Yes, I'm <laughs> jealous of the doctor visit experience in the UK versus the US. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. I mean, like, uh, we, we already talked about that mm -hmm. quite a bit, but uh, her experience in the US mirrors a lot of the yeah, experiences the we've had good. with doctors. So I think this is... And, you know, I taught my, my mother, she goes to the doctor all the time for a number of different things. And uh, she's always complaining about, you know, the way doctors are treating her and stuff like that. And then, like, you know, I, I, I think I've talked to a number of different people and it seems like it seems to be a big problem here in the U.S. The way the, the medical system is set up now, mm -hmm. you know, where where where's the blame placed there? Is it bl is the blame placed squarely on the doctors themselves choosing to not spend time with their patients? And uh, they, these issues like not writing the information down in a lot of ways. Yeah. And so, or is it the medical establishment in some ways and the practice itself yeah, scheduling too many people for this doctor? I or? think it's a domino effect of the chain of <laughs> command, I guess. Mm. So, like, it starts in medical school, like the things that you're taught. Yes. And then, yeah, just and then it goes kinda, down and down. Yeah. Down. And I mean, like, um, I do wonder, like, I mean, it, it really does seem like from her experience and it, and I got to say from people uh, in the comments talking about the NHS and stuff, when I've seen the comments about it mm -hmm. in other videos, um, it seems like as a whole, the medical establishment, uh, doctors in general, people have an experience of actually feeling heard when they go to the doctor in the UK, they have experience of feeling uh, like, the doctor's going to try to get to the bottom of whatever it is right. instead of instead of just simply, oh, you got I look at you for two minutes. Oh, I bet you have this. I'm going to throw this this here. There, here's these eight prescription drugs for you. Go ahead and take these. But watch out because each of them have different side effects that are going to screw you up, probably. Um, so uh, but yeah, I love I love the idea that in the UK, it seems like at least from the brief bit she talked about it, seems like they're much more likely to prescribe a more natural remedy. First. Yeah. As an, yeah. And, and then and then the then the prescription, the medication Would comes like when the, you when they realize, well, this is needed yeah. because uh, something is too far along or something is not going to be solved with a natural mm -hmm. approach in this case. And, and that's obviously when you should use medication, but this in America, it it's just like the first line of it defense. It is the even first. If it's not the right. The first, the middle, and the ending line of defense, no matter what. And mm -hmm. it's just and I and again, I'm not saying there's probably plenty of American doctors that do take the time to listen to you, do look for alternatives besides mm -hmm. uh, medication. But in our experience, mirrored with Dara's, um, it, it seems to be that yeah. it, it seems to be something. There's a big issue here in the U.S., and I am jealous of what she's talking about in regards of being able to, um, you know, even, I mean, a lot of people don't use private doctors in the, the in the UK. They uh, use the NHS, but it sounds like either way, man, it sounds like it's a, yeah, it, it's, it's much better system. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you got? Anything you want to add? No. All right, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow us on our journey to discover our British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys. Peace. Bye.